Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be on Icy Shell watching Anarchid versus El Tororo. And let's get started. So Icy Shell is actually a pretty new map. I played it the other day. It's interesting, as you can see, quite flat, has an extremely valuable metal income spot in the center, and both players have startup placing Light Vehicle Factory for Anarchid and a Light Vehicle Factory for El Torero, which makes sense. This map is, as you can see, flat. <laughs> very, very flat. Vehicles are going to be quite useful here. I, when I was playing it last time, I was actually playing against newer players, so I ended up going amphibious spots. Oh, I apologize. My chest in the wrong spot. Anyway. Sorry about that. But anyway, I was playing amphibious spots, and that's to be expected. It didn't go especially well, but what are you going to do? I was playing against a newer player. I wanted to Wanted to keep it... No, give myself a handicap, keep it even. Anyway, both players going for darts pretty early on. Very typical start for Light Vehicle Factory. Typically, you'll start with darts, and as we see a slasher... Actually, oh, slasher? Okay, that's unusual. Normally, you see darts into scorchers. Darts being the quick raiding unit, and scorchers being a slightly more expensive raiding unit. And the darts are basically only used for scouting. Once they get into combat, they're dead. But scorchers can hold their own in combat pretty well, their main gimmick is that they actually have to be really close to their enemies to deal most damage. Their weapon, it loses damage as it gains, as the range increases. So, they need to be very close to their, to their targets, which means that you actually have to micro them pretty well. Because if you use the default micromanagement setup, they, because there is automatic micromanagement in this game, but it'll keep them at furthest range. However, both players, well. A mason being built for El for Anarchids. He's going for quick production. El Torero was going for a slasher instead. Slashers are basically a stationary rocket unit. They move into position, you have them stop, and then they fire. They can only fire while stopped, which is unusual in this game. But they are quite powerful when you have about four or five of them in a line. Because they basically don't let anything through. If you have four or five of them in a line and radar supporting them, if something attacks the edge of the line, obviously that's going to be a problem. But if things go head-on into it, it's going to die. It'll just have rockets bearing down on it, like, 10 per second, pretty much, because it fire about once every half second. It's very difficult to break through a good slasher line. However, El Torero has not quite set up his slasher line yet. He's only got a couple of them for keeping peace, basically in place of defenders, the missile turret. And, actually, that's not a terrible idea. They are more expensive than defenders by a, f by a fair amount, but they are mobile, which is, of course, what you're paying for when it comes to units over defenses. And El Torero not even focusing on all static defenses, whereas Anarchid's got light laser turrets around everything. Not a huge amount, but still, he does have stuff covered pretty well. And I'm trying to remember if this is useful for Anarchid. I've played Anarchid before a few times, but I haven't played him recently, so I'm not sure if... As I recall, he wasn't the most defensive player, and this doesn't seem out of place, but... It's a fair amount of defenses. Mind you, on a map this open, there's really no natural terrain defenses except for this hill up here, or these hills over here. Which means having static defenses like this is a good idea. The defenses that we saw from El Torero, I mean the slashers I should say for defense, a good idea as well, but a little bit risky because they are going to be more expensive for what they do. Of course, he can move forward, and as you see, he is pushing them forward, but I think he might be overextending a bit. And now getting a light laser turret, so he isn't completely at, or actually no, not a light laser turret, just getting the frame for one. He does not have any masons to go build it, and his commander is going away, so I'm not entirely sure why he did that. Possibly to fool radar, I would guess. But light laser turrets are not that expensive. I mean, anyway, darts are going around for El Torero, and he does have a scorcher. We will see what I was talking about before about the damage over range. Probably, unless he's not micromanaging them. He was focusing on them. He is focusing on them now, and he is making sure to make the most of them. One slasher here doing what it can, but it really isn't enough. Both these Scorchers doing a great job getting rid of a Builder and a Metal Extractor. However, Anarchid does have more Constructors. On the other hand, El Torero getting attacked as well. Ravager coming in very early from Anarchid. Ravager's being the main Assault Tank, and it's typically the way you play the Car Factory is... That is the Light Vehicle Factory. Is you build up a few Raider units to support building up tons and tons of Ravagers. In some cases, Levelers, but against another Light Vehicle player... Levelers are not likely to be seen very much. They're very useful. They're riot units that have really fast shells. They're very useful against cloaky bots and a little bit less useful against shield bots, but still useful. However, Ravagers are just more powerful, and when you consider that light vehicles... I mean, Scorchers are quite fast, but everything else is fairly slow. 
which means the Ravagers are just going to be that much more useful. However, the Scorchers are making the most of their speed. Actually, getting rid of Anarchist or Yes, they are getting rid of Anarchist Commander or very close to. Between El Terrero's Commander being right there, I think El Terrero's Commander will finish it off. And I, no, Anarchy, he might be able to escape his, his Commander. And El Terrero actually taking quite a bit of damage himself, but he's going to be able to get rid of the Slasher without too much issue. And another Ravager coming in. Anarchist streaming them in. El Terrero still staying in the Slasher stage, not moving on to anything beyond that. And there goes his commander, El Torero's commando, down. So he only has his, well, this mason right here and the factory here to build up stuff with. However, El Torero does have a healthy economy. He has 14 metal income and 24 energy, so he has nothing much to worry about. He just lost, a, he lost a fair amount of build power, but he should be able to build enough masons to make up for it fairly quickly. The main concern is going to be these ravagers coming in, and Anarchid continuing to stream them in. Anarchid's commander being used to expand as well, so... And Anarchid actually getting the center metal point... This is big, so Anakin right now has... Actually, Anakin has double the metal that El Torero has. I don't see any reclaiming, which means that is entirely because of... Well, just more metal extraction in general, but this... This center point here is... That's a quarter... Oh, that's a fifth of Anarchid's metal income right there. If El Torero were to take it out, and he could... Right now, he actually could. There's nothing stopping him. These Ravagers would take too long. These Scorchers need to get in there and take care of that metal extractor because it is undefended and extremely valuable. And we see El Torero is... He is maneuvering them, but he is not actually putting them in the center. I'm actually not sure if that... No, that actually, that area might not be easily vehicle pathable from the looks of it. And the purple meaning that it's basically not vehicle pathable, or... I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Then, unfortunately, the pathing display is a little bit confusing. Red is not impassable. It's more like black or purple that's impassable. But yeah, that's, that is a problem because El Torero does not have any other factories he... Might want to invest in... Well, actually, he can't really afford investing in another one right now. Unless he stops production in his vehicle factory. Or gets some long-range units. If he gets a Merle, actually, that would do the trick. Granted, he really wants to get up in the Ravager game. If he's clever with these Scorchers, he should be able to take out the Ravager. But he wants to get into the Ravager game because that way he's actually able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Anarchid's forces. Though, given that his economy is considerably weaker, I don't see that working out too well. Anarchid, on the other hand, has gotten a caretaker up, not for the purposes of assisting this factory, he's using a mason for that, but no additional factories being built. In fact, Anarchid's wasting quite a bit of metal, and Scorch is coming in for harassment, taking out some of the metal extractors, two of the metal extractors gone, oh, a, a couple builders and a metal extractor going down, and the Ravager's coming in to defend, but already stuff has been lost, and from this point, El Torero can get away scot-free pretty much. He'll need to repair some of these Scorchers, but he's basically free, whereas... Anarchid still has an economic advantage. He still has... He's wasting metal. He's not even pushing his production capacity yet. And this Ravager should be going down, but it will be able to take out one of the Scorchers in the process. That's one down. Actually, no, only one. But the other two are very weak. They're both basically one shot away from death. I don't see them being able to stand up in another fight without repairing. And right now, El Torero only has... Well, actually, he has a, a one spare mason, so he should be able to build up from that or repair from that. However, he is now on the back foot. Some Ravager's moving into position, which is good, and at this point, though, Anarchid definitely ahead. He's streaming in Ravagers. He can build some extra Masons. He could easily build another factory if he wanted to. And at this point, there is a small local advance for El Torero, but he only has that for a few seconds, and a leveler here as well, which is an interesting choice, but that leveler will probably go... That leveler will go down to the Ravagers. Assuming the Ravagers stop hitting themselves. But... That leveler, not able to do too much. Like I said before, this isn't the best matchup for levelers. This is a great matchup for Ravagers, but levelers really need not apply, unless El Torero were to switch up to Cloaky Bots or something like that, in which case levelers would be wonderful. Ravagers, however, are Anarchid's mainstay attack force, which means he didn't lose too much from that, and he's still ahead. He still has an economic advantage. It's nowhere near running out. He's still wasting metal, actually. He really should build another factory. Like, possibly air? I mean... Air is the common choice, really. It's let's see. In this case, against the Ravagers, hmm. Now, in fact, against as many Ravagers, it almost wouldn't be a bad idea to go for Cloakies, just because you'd be able to have the speed around it, and the Ravagers can't really deal with it. There's no answer to it, and El Torero has no static defenses around the map, or very few. Is a light laser turret here and there, but not much. Nothing the Ravagers themselves couldn't deal with, or a few Scorchers. And Dominatrix is coming out. Okay, this is unusual. Dominatrix being the only vehicle in the game, the only unit in the game that can capture other units. So Anakin 
looks like he's just planning on stealing some of these Ravagers and using them to tear everything apart. And some harassment coming in from El Torero. This harassment doing a decent job. El Torero actually building up pretty well. He is still behind, but he is not taking much damage in the meantime, and he is able to actually... He's able to expand quite a bit. He still needs to get rid of the central expansion, but he does at this point... Let's see, he has... Doesn't quite have a metal surplus yet, but he is close, and he definitely has... With 24 middle income, he could support another factory. It would be a bit tough, but Dominatrix is coming in, and... They are not getting hit directly, however, the Ravagers are being destroyed too quickly. They cannot be killed. One of them actually is getting captured, and two of them getting captured. So, at this point, Anarchid basically has this game. Unless El Toro can pull something out of his hat, like I said, once again, Air Factory, Napalm Bomb. A nice Napalm Strike on this would be fairly devastating. A nice EMP Strike followed by a bunch of Ravagers coming in would be even better. But I don't see either of those things happening. In fact, I'm fairly certain that it's going to be Anarchid's game right now. And in case you're wondering, I... Oh, I'm getting a small question in the chat about when to build a second factory versus caretakers. That's a really tricky decision. It depends entirely on how well you're going. I, f I found that if you're doing well, you'll want to build more caretakers just because your current unit composition is great. If you're... And that, you'd want to do at 20 metal. 20 metal income is when you want to consider it. Maybe earlier if you're finding your current unit composition is not working and you just are in a bad matchup, then it might not be a bad idea to switch factories earlier. However, to get a caretaker at 20 metal, like basically every 10 metal is when I'd consider it. So every 10 metal income. It's just the first green number up here. So when you're at 10, that's when you're stabilized. When you're at 20, that's when you need to consider a caretaker or a factory if you want to keep stable production of what you're doing. At 30, you definitely want to consider if you haven't done so yet. And... At that point, it really is just a question of how well you're doing right now. Factories are basically there to add options. If you need those options, go for them. If you don't need those options, it's often a better idea just to get better unit production capacity, which is what caretakers give you. Anyway, that was this game, and I will be streaming another one shortly, so stay tuned, everybody.